Greetings, greetings, greetings. Welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? Well, we're already second week in February and lo and behold, um, today we're going to be talking about something that most of us do day in, day out. We do it all the time, but we don't realize when we do it how we do it and what we are doing. Actually, we do realize it, but we do it so often that it's become what I say, it's it's like um, we don't realize. So what we do day in, day out is called making decisions, making choices. I was talking to a friend of mine, actually we were in a group and we started talking about choices that we make in life and it can be from what we eat what we drink where we go uh, what our business is the decisions that we make about our behaviors or our habits and everything hi rosa hello adrian thank you for being here and we started talking about women's rights uh choices that we make because of all the controversial things that are happening and all that. And then the discussion became a little bit warmer. I don't want to say heated, but warmer about being rich, being poor, the Me Too movement, and me being a woman, how I help women stand up for themselves. And all this stemmed from the title of my book. So the title of my book, the book that I wrote right there in the background is called Stand Up to Slim Down. As a matter of fact, before I forget, for those of you who are, who are anywhere in the Los Angeles area, I'm having a book signing on February 22nd in the Burbank of Barnes & Noble. Yay! So please check my website, check the hours and everything. I invite you all to come. So stand up to slim down. Wait, is it a choice? Hmm, yes. It's a choice what we eat. It's a choice when we exercise. It's a decision that we make about who we are and all that, right? So, but stand up to slim down. It's also coming from two different places. How we stand up for ourselves, what we say to ourselves, for ourselves, standing up for our rights, standing up for our voice, a voice that we have, standing up for the things that we believe in. So for us to slim down in a way is also getting rid of not only the fat, not only the negativity, negative talk, negative thoughts, negative ideas, concepts, images, even people, negative people in our life and becoming very raw and real. So the question that was around and they asked me is, you work with women's wellness and how do you help women stand up? Because everything in life is a choice. And then the conversation went into me too. Um, do I go for the march? Do I stand up and everything? So. Does a woman have the right to say whatever she wants, to wear whatever she wants, not looking in the mirror what she looks like? Does she have the right? Yes. Does another person have the right to say whatever they want to because it's their opinion? Yes. Is she bringing it on to herself? Yes. But it is her choice. She has to also take ownership of if she is wearing something controversial or provocative, that if someone says anything, she stands up for herself and says it's none of your business and she can take it. 
instead of what she wears and if she does not think it is proper that if someone makes a comment or uh, a suggest uh, uh, a comment that she does not appreciate it so and then the discussion went to well what about um Harvey Weinstein and a woman having going to the room she has a choice when she goes into a hotel room of what happens to her well let me say this I believe she has a choice where she goes she also has a choice what time she goes to where she goes she also may have a very good idea that when she goes into a hotel room, especially of a powerful man, of an executive, at 11 o'clock at night to a hotel room, what may transpire? If you're an adult, if you are in a sound mind and you want to be in a movie, have a role or something like that, yes, I believe. You have a choice you go and you may also know the consequences and must accept the consequences but what consequences you may want to know that yes there will be hanky-panky but that woman does not is not putting herself in that position to say you have the right to rape me you have the right to do this so I believe there is a fine line on the choices that we make and what we say and do. We also have to take ownership of where we place ourselves. If we place ourselves in place of danger, if knowing what may happen, why do we do it? So it's not unless there is a gun to our head that we are forced into the places. But even that, is that a choice? So the bottom line was her saying that you take the most negative things and see the silver lining. And that's through because of how you look at things and that is that how you do your therapies well let me say this stand up to slim down comes also i stand up for you but i also want you to stand up for yourself for you to take responsibility and ownership of the consequences and the decisions that you make and it doesn't matter from what you eat what you say and where you go and what you do I've been young, I've done things that I had to pay for the consequences, believe it or not. I've done things that if I, if it was today, there is no way I would dare. There is no way I would dare do the, yes, one night stand, not knowing. But maybe 30 years ago was completely different than what's happening nowadays. And yet, who knows? I've taken, put myself in places of pure danger that if I was asked to do it today, there was no way I would do. Maybe it is wisdom. Maybe it comes with age. But at the same time, we have teenagers and young girls putting their life in danger. For what? For what? For another role? for a position, for another, uh, a, an object, it's not worth it. Especially when you are being, um, mm, manipulated into something. I want you to become so aware of so much manipulation for you to succumb to things that you're not supposed to well not that you're not supposed to you can do anything you want but value your life value your body value who you are
and instead of stuffing so much of that what is happening it's time for you to express it express it lovingly not with anger express and know that you have a voice so the whole thing came from for those of you who do not know I'm also a domestic abuse consultant so I do consultation in empowering a woman so that if she has been there to know how to stand up for herself when I was molested as a young girl and when I spoke about it nobody believed me and at that time when that happened to me I was told be quiet don't say anything about it and because of my care and love for the person I held my peace or silence but today not but today but and today there are so many who still hold their silence who still remain quiet but there is support now there are people right here right now I'm saying I'm here to support you we don't have to suppress all that because when we suppress things like this it also stuffs inside when that stuffing is in there it creates disease it creates stress it it adds to the trauma and it doesn't matter if it's a woman or a man yet women are more susceptible and women hold their emotions and stuff it in there yes men do too but we are not the weaker one we are strong for being able to hold all that information and I think that's a strength but not realizing that strength goes against you that it goes against your body it goes against your psyche it goes against so much and we just feel depleted for things like that so many many years ago the in domestic abuse uh, in domestic violence there is a day in October that we call it denim day on that day it is asked for every woman to wear jeans to work now why because so many years ago and I can't remember the date but I will post it in here I will put the link for all of you to know and realize what denim day is about it's that it was a domestic abusive case that uh, the woman was raped and she got raped wearing while she had the jeans not over the jeans but when it went to court the part was that she couldn't have been raped because she was wearing tight jeans and the judge overthrew the case stating that if you are wearing such tight jeans then you must have been a culprit in pulling the jeans down so the case was overthrown and I will give you the links it's not so much about the judge it's not so much about what happened because unfortunately there are so many who get raped even men get raped by another man uh, we hear it all the time uh, of being molested through the churches through private schools and everything that's not the point but the silver lining is how I take it and make it right because that one woman who was humiliated and underwent such duress it's like she became the sacrifice that that case is now years and years later become the most prominent thing to make a difference and empower so many others that this is now a source of empowerment and in motivation for other women that one case unfortunately sad hard trauma is now the stepping stone for so many others that the case 
can be overthrown in courts, not even get to appellate courts. But what happened is one case became the voice of so many. And I also can become really, maybe some people will not think like this, but, and it's not about politics, and yet it's become politics political that so many say the me too if you're not marching why aren't you not marching for women i am one of the biggest advocate in women's rights human rights it's not about man or woman as a matter of fact i don't think me too movement really came to fruition until this president and everything they started marching against uh, our current president, President Trump, and this Me Too movement came together and came to surface. The same way as I work with my clients and I say, if you have a illness, if you have a disease, if you have anything, it's, yes, my work is through hypnotherapy and hypnosis and digging deeper, but it's, you got to poke that, that, the Inflammation is there because the pus underneath it is boiling, it's, it's infected. So because of that, we need to poke in, we need to dig in to get rid of that pus, to get rid of the onion, to pull it from the roots. So this Me Too movement, by all means, it's wonderful. It's wonderful that it came to fruition, all these cases coming to light. So we are now standing up, standing up for this, having a voice and knowing that there is support, support for who we are. And yet whatever we do, we must also become strong enough to accept the consequences and the choices because not everything is somebody else's fault. If we place ourselves in positions that is dangerous and wrong, we can't stand and blame, but we must take ownership. So I take it from both sides. If this disease, instead of fixing it from the beginning, instead of healing it from then, we don't have to let it become such inflammated or a cavity that is destroying the tr tooth. When you feel a toothache, go and see a dentist. Don't wait until it hits the roots and it hits your gums, then start blaming the dentist for not being able to do anything right away when you did not do the follow-up, when you're not taking ownership of your own health. It's not the dentist's fault. It's not the orthodontist's fault. And it's not nobody's fault if you can't afford all that because you waited months and months. So what I'm saying is, let's accept and appreciate and stand up for one another. When I say collaborative, it's to come together and say, I stand by you. I stand with you. But I'm also here for the reality instead of pointing fingers to another. With this, embracing is also embracing and appreciating your own strength. So if you have gone through some trauma and things like that, take the choice and make the decision to start the healing. And instead of standing and pointing fingers of the past, no matter whose fault it was, because at the meantime, we can also say in a way, it's our fault to hold on to all that not knowing how to release it, not knowing where to voice it, how to express it. So 
forgiving ourselves for holding on for that long and saying, today I embrace myself. By evoking all that today, I choose to embrace the best of me and to forgive me for holding on to that story, to that history. By saying, I embrace the best of my health, my well being, my sound mind, and whatever happened, let me find the silver lining so that I can empower myself, empower my body, empower all that surrounds me. And how may I empower and make a difference to someone else's life? You see, I got into this business because I healed my ovarian cyst, not wanting, literally crying on the table with the oncologist, not the oncologist, I'm so sorry, I, I was working with a cancer patient last night, so that came up, but with the gynecologist. And when he said we were going to go for another surgery because your cyst is growing again, I had already had two surgeries, like a C-section, but instead of a baby, they took out the ovarian cyst. And I was crying and bawling, and I said, not again. And it was because of that I was re the manager at the law firm that I used to work as an assistant to attorney sent me to an acupuncturist. It was the acupuncturist that referred me to a hypnotherapist. And it was in few sessions, about four or five sessions, that I recognized why my body was literally creating this in my ovaries, rejecting because that's what I call a part of that cyst is like a pus. It was just growing like a pus, like a cyst, like a disease. And it was through hypnotherapy that I had to quiet down, literally be quiet with my body. We are so overwhelmed. We are so over stimulated with so much from everywhere, from our phones, from uh, TV. You go into an elevator, you're stimulated with information. You go to a pump, a gas, there is this information from this kiosk. We are constantly overloaded and it's heavy and we need the quiet time. So if you're exercising to empower your body, please stop listening to that media overlooking there and showing you a crash or showing you another news and stock going down or a chase or murder mayhem because that's not healing to the body as you're exercising and bringing joy to this body. Yes, I healed myself through hypnotherapy. So that in a way we took that cyst out, that pus out, in order for me to start this healing process. And if it wasn't because of that, and if it wasn't because of me learning how to do hypnotherapy 21 years ago, I would not be doing this day in, day out so that I can empower others to know you have pu pure essence of choice and decisions that you make day in, day out for your body, for your well-being, for your love, for every nerve and every muscle, every organ of your body, your life, your relationships, your sex life, your relationship life, your life and relationship with your parents, with your children, with your co-workers. Unfortunately, nowadays, you can't even go to a company or a corporation and have fun with your colleagues because everyone is walking on eggshells, God forbid. I can't say this. I can't say that. I can't look. I can't, I can't even show appreciation of someone doing good. Oh my God, everyone is on pins and needles now. 
we've gone too much. The pendulum is too much to the other side. And then we are expecting all this stress and walking on eggshells, all this commotion and feeling overwhelmed to find a quiet place, to find serenity. Even when you want to go and do just pure meditation and sleep, you're wondering why you cannot sleep. You're wondering why you cannot have quiet time. Have you even given yourself a moment of silence? To listen to the clock ticking, to listen to your heart beating, to listen to you. Wouldn't it be good for you just blow away? You see, everything, how I started with that high energy, I can switch it off and be this. If you could only take two minutes of your day, every hour, you can even count, put a timer and give yourself 60 to 90 seconds, which is a minute and a half. of oneness and calm. Every nerve, every muscle, every organ, every tissue. We'll breathe in and feel love coming in. And that is probably one of the best choices you can make to empower you. So as you breathe in and out, give yourself this moment of pure essence of oxygen and vitality. Hypnosis is an internal process. And you can have that quiet time in your office, sitting in your car, sitting at the toilet, in the bathroom, having a nice bath, even under the shower. Close your eyes. Allow the water that comes trickling down from the top of your head. Wash away. Cleanse. And heal. Not only your body. But everything. That you no longer want to hold. And if you happen to cry, allow the tears to flow. And know that sometimes it's not your fault. But other times it's good to take ownership and say, now what? Not why, now what? What can I do to better my life? to better my body, to better myself, lovingly, lovingly. And with that, I'm going to take one second or one minute and see if there is any messages I can. I'm looking sideways, amen. Hi, Mark. Hello, Attila. Hi, Ray. Hi, Robert. 
of course, Mark. Hi, Ani and Zarik. Thank you for all of you being here. So if this message has resonated with you, or you can always leave me a comment and I will be more than happy to respond. You can always find me at, of course, www.healwithin.com. You can text me privately and I will respond to your messages at 818-221-2797. You can always email me and message me. I am here for you. And please subscribe. Just check that bell, subscribe. If you are in the LA area, you want to meet me in person, and if you haven't, by all means, come to uh, my book signing on February 22nd, and it's going to be held at the Burbank Barnes & Noble, and my book, uh, Stand Up to Heal Down, and what else? I'm here for you. From this day forward, I want you to say, I am ready to stand up for myself, to accept and appreciate myself far more deeply than ever before. Because if you have lasted until now, you are much stronger than you have given yourself permission to believe. And I want you to build on your strengths. We all have weaknesses. But sometimes we forget our strengths are more powerful. And that's what's holding us up. And with that, I, got, I wish you all the best. May God bless you and the universal light surround you. Thank you for being here. Is there anything I should respond? Oh, thank you for all the hearts. Thank you. Hi, Doug. Hi, Doug. I love you too, Mark. Don't forget to subscribe and share. Yes, please don't forget to subscribe and share. Hi, Jasmine. Love you, Greg. Bye-bye. See you next week.